Welcome to the biology section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 81 to 85. So first I'll show you guys the questions so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 81, 82, 83, 84, and 85. Now let's go through the questions together. In question 81, it says the region of the brain most responsible for respiration is the blank. So which region is it? It is A. A is correct. The pons, it has nuclei which are the most critical for things like respiration and ventilation. This is a part of the brain where those are located. The cere cerebellum, it's more so related to things like balance and coordination. So that's incorrect. The thalamus is a relay station for many different senses and so not really related to respiration. And D, the hypothalamus, it has a lot of different functions. Some of these include controlling body temperature and thirst and hunger, but not respiration. So A is the correct answer. In question 82, it says, observe the following curve for a yeast in fresh medium. Which of the following statements is true about the growth of the yeast at time t? So we wanna know what is true at time t. So looking at this, y-axis is giving us a live cell, con cell count. So we get more cells as time goes on. And you see over here that there's kind of a plateau. So there was no growth at the beginning, but then growth. And then after the growth phase, we have a plateau. But y-axis, that is giving us a live cell count. And it's still high at time t, so that doesn't mean that we have no growth or no cells. We, we had a lot of cells, and if, if we had fewer cells, that would mean that this line would start going back down, and it would go down on the y-axis, but it's not like we have fewer cells. So option A is saying there's no cell growth, option B is saying there's no cell division, and C is saying there's no cell death. So these are implying that you know either we don't have growth happening or we don't have death happening. But if we had no growth, then the cell count would have fallen. And if we had death occurring, then same thing, cell count would have fallen. But the cell count has stayed stagnant at some level. That means that some cells naturally have to be dying as time is going forward. But since the cell count isn't falling, there must also be some cells growing. Therefore, we have an equilibrium where we have no net cell growth or death, but we do have some happening. So D is correct. Cell division is equal to cell death, therefore we stay stagnant at that cell count. A is implying that there's no cell growth, that's incorrect. B is saying there's no cell division, that's related to cell growth, so that is also incorrect. And C is saying there is no cell death. If there was no death, then this line would have kept on going upwards and the cell count would have kept on increasing. So that's not happening, therefore C is also incorrect. In question 83, it says cyclic AMP is a common member of signal transduction pathways. In many cases, CAMP indirectly regulates ATP production. High concentrations of CAMP indicate a high rate of ATP use in the cell. Which of the following is the most likely consequence of high CAMP concentrations in the cell? So if we have high CAMP, and then we know that high concentrations of this indicate high rate of ATP use. So we're using a lot of ATP. So which thing is related to what's going on? So something, one of these options has to relate to a high rate of ATP use, meaning that we have a cell that is at a low energy, low energy level. So which consequence is going to occur because we have a low energy level. Option A is saying there's going to be an increase in the rate of glucose metabolism, and this is actually correct, it makes sense. If we have a low ATP level, then what we need to do is do something which increases our energy level and have some ATP being produced. Therefore, glucose metabolism would be a correct consequence if the cell detects high CAMP. Option B is saying a decrease in the rate of glycogen metabolism, when we metabolize glycogen, we're releasing free glucose that we can use, 
and then we can break this down for energy. That is something that we would want to happen. There would be an increase, not a decrease. So B is incorrect. Option C is saying increase in the rate of ATP dephosphorylation. If we dephosphorylated ATP, that means that we're using ATP, we're breaking it down, but we are already at a low energy state. So that's not gonna be a consequence of the cell detecting that it's at a low energy state. C is also incorrect. D is saying a decrease in the rate of ATP production. That's incorrect. That's literally the opposite of what we want to do. So A is the best answer for this question. In question 84, it says a researcher wants to insert a series of genes too large to be practically transferred by a plasmid. The researcher places them into a viral capsid and infects the bacterium with the virus. The, this method of gene transfer is known as blank. So we have a method of gene transfer and we used a viral capsid and infected a bacterium. Note that we didn't use a plasmid. So what type of gene transfer is this? Option A is transformation and transformation would be if we use a plasmid. Transformation, it involves the uptake of genetic information from the environment, and therefore, once again, it would be a plasmid and not some viral intermediate, so transformation would be incorrect. That is not what happened. Option B is saying transduction, and this is correct. This is when we actually transfer genes using a viral intermediate, and that's exactly what happened here. Therefore, transduction is the name of the method of gene transfer that we used. Conjugation, that is when we have genes being transferred directly between two bacteria. So one bacterium interacts with another and it transfers its genes. And that's just between two bacteria and not anything to do with a viral intermediate. So that is also incorrect. And finally, vertical gene transfer is the transfer from parents to offspring. And that's not what's going on here. We're talking about a virus interacting with a bacterium and therefore there's no parent offspring relationship going on here so vertical gene transfer is also incorrect in question 85 we're asked which of the following types of bonds is responsible for binding of purines with pyrimidines so purines and pyrimidines and we're asked for the type of bond well when we're talking about nucleotides bonding with each other between different strings right so how do complementary strings in DNA, complementary strands, how do they bond with each other? It's through hydrogen bonds. So B is the correct answer. Here is an example of the bonds. You can see that C and G are using these hydrogen bonds over here to bind. So it's not just due to van der Waals forces. No, it's due to hydrogen bonds. They're not covalent bonds. They're not that strong. They're just hydrogen bonds and we see that DNA is often broken up into single strands and then re-annealed. So that can only happen if it's relatively easy to make and break the bonds. If they were covalent bonds, then it wouldn't be that easy. So they're not covalent bonds. They are not polar bonds. They are specifically hydrogen bonds. So B is the correct answer here. That's it for the questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below and in that course we go through just like in this video a lot of questions and go through all the different answer options and explain why each one is correct or incorrect other than that make sure to subscribe to this channel and then you'll stay up to date with the videos that we post here that's it for this video i'll see you guys 